you know what happened? My camera ran out of battery power. And so right in the middle of the story, we, we lost power. And so this is the second half of the story of Bartholomew Cubbins and his 500 hats. Or, as it's otherwise known, the 500 hats of Bartholomew Cubbins. So, as you may remember, when we left off our story, the father of the father of Nad came to the king, and he didn't know what to do about Bartholomew Cubbins, and the king bellowed in a terrifying voice, Does this mean there's no one in my whole kingdom who can take off this boy's hat? And a small voice came up through the balcony window. What's the matter, Uncle Darwin? To Bartholomew, it sounded like a voice of a boy. The king stepped out on the balcony, and he leaned over the marble railing. Well, there's a boy in here just about your age, the king says, and he won't take off his hat. Bartholomew tipped up behind the king and looked down, and there stood a boy with a big lace collar, a very proud little boy with his nose up in the air. It was the Grand Duke Wilfred, nephew of the king. And there he is with his nose up in the air. You send him down here, said Grand Duke Wilfred, and I'll fix him. The king thought for a moment. He pushed back his crown, and he scratched his head. Well, maybe you can. There's no harm in crying. Take him to the Grand Duke Wilfred, commanded the king, and two of the king's own guards took Bartholomew out of the throne room. <clears throat> Pooh, said Grand Duke Wilfred, looking at Bartholomew's hat and laughing meanly. That hat won't come off? <laughs> You stand right over there. He pointed to the corner where the wall curved out. I need a little target practice with my bow and arrow. When Bartholomew saw that the Grand Duke Wilford had only a child's bow, then he didn't feel so bad. He spoke up proudly. I can shoot with my father's big bow. Well, my bow is plenty big enough for shooting hats, especially hats like yours, answered Wilford. And he let fly an arrow. Zip! Right past Bartholomew's forehead, nipping off his hat, and it blew up and over the parapet. But another hat appeared on his head. Zip! Zip! The arrows flew. Zip! Till the Grand Duke's whole bag full of arrows was gone, and there was still a, a hat that sat upon Bartholomew's head. It's not fair! cried the Grand Duke. It's not fair! He threw down his bow and he stamped on it. One hundred and fifty-four hats, gulped Sir Alaric. He's still counting. These hats are driving me mad, the king's voice rang through the palace. Why waste time with a child's bow and arrow? Fetch me the mightiest bow and arrow in the realm. Fetch, yeoman of the bowmen. Yeoman of the bowmen, echoed the lords and noblemen of the court. A gigantic man strode across the terrace. His bow was as big as the branch of a tree. His arrow was twice as long as Bartholomew, it was high, and thicker than his wrist. Yeoman of the bowmen, said the king, shoot off this boy's hat and make it stay off. He's going to shoot. Bartholomew was trembling so hard he could scarcely stand straight. The yeoman bent back his mighty bow. Zip! Like a giant hornet, the arrow tore through the air toward Bartholomew Cubbins. Zip! The sharp arrow head bit through the hat and carried it off for a full half mile. And then it plunked to the stop in the heart of an oak tree. And yet there was Bartholomew's head under another hat. The face of the yeoman of the bowmen went white as the palace walls. It's black magic, he shrieked. Ah, black magic. That's what it is, said the king. I should have thought of that before. That makes it very simple. Back to the throne room and call my magicians. In the whole throne room, there wasn't a sound as loud as breath, but from the spiral stairs that led down from the southwest tower came the shuffling of slow padded feet. The magicians were coming. Low and slow, they were chanting words that were strange. Dig a hole five furlongs deep down to where the night snakes creep. Mix and mold the mystic mud, malber, balber, titter, tud. In came seven black gown magicians, and beside each one stalked a lean black cat. They circled around Bartholomew Cubbins, muttering deep and mysterious sounds. Look at him. Doesn't that look mysterious? 
Stop this muttering, ordered the king. I want a chant that will charm away this boy's hat. The magicians huddled over Bartholomew, and they started chanting. Winkabus, tinkabus, photochi clay, hat on this demon's head, fly far away. Howl, men, howl away, howl away, howl away, yowl, cats, yowl away, yowl away, yowl away. Hat on this demon's head, seep away, creep away, leap away, gleep away, and never come back. That was a mighty good chant, said the king, looking very pleased. Are you sure it will work? The magicians nodded. But there still seems to be a hat on his head. How long will it take for this charm to work? Be calm, O oh sire, and have no fears. Our charm will work in ten short years. Ten years, grasped the king. Oh, hey, you fools, out of my sight. I can't wait ten years to get rid of his hat. Oh, dear. What am I going to do now? If I were the king, whispered Grand Duke Wilfred, I'd chop off his head. Oh, that's a dreadful thought, said the king, biting his lip. But I may have to do that. Young man, he said to Bartholomew Cubbins, he pointed to a small door at the end of the room, march down those steps to the dungeon and tell the executioner to chop off your head. Bartholomew's heart sank into his boots, but he did as the king commanded. I must take off my hat, he said to himself as he started down the long black stairway. This is my last chance. One hat, hat after another tore off him from his head. 156, 157, 158. It got cold and damp. 257, 218, 219. Down, down. 231, 232, 233. It seemed to Bartholomew that he must be in the very heart of the mountain. And then there came a voice from the heart of the blackness. Who's there? Bartholomew turned a corner and stepped into the dungeon. The executioner was whistling and swinging his axe idly because at the moment he had nothing to do. In spite of his business, he really seemed to be a very pleasant man. The king says, you must chop off my head, said Bartholomew. Oh, I'd hate to do that, said the executioner, looking at him with a friendly smile. You seem like a very nice boy. Well, the king says you have to, so... Please get it over with. All right, sighed the executioner, but first you have to take off your hat. Why? said Bartholomew. Oh, I don't know why, but it's one of the rules. I can't execute you with your hat on. Well, all right then, you take it off for me. The executioner leaned across the chopping block and he flipped off Bartholomew's hat. <laughs> you know what happened? His hat disappeared and another one appeared underneath it. What is this? he gasped, blinking through the holes in his mask as another hat appeared. He flipped off one and then another. Fiddlesticks, grunted the executioner, throwing his axe on the floor. I can't execute you at all. He shook hands with Bartholomew and sent him back upstairs to the king. The king had been taking a nap on the throne. Whoa, whoa, what are you doing back here? he said to Bartholomew, angry at being awakened. Well, I'm sorry, your majesty, explained Bartholomew, but my head can't come off with a hat on. It's against the rules. Oh, so it can't, said the king, leaning back wearily now. How many hats does that make altogether? <clears throat> well, let's see. The executioner knocked off 13, and I left 178 more on the dungeon steps. Uh, let's see. 346 hats, mumbled Sir Alaric from behind his scroll. Uncle Derwin, yawned Grand Duke Wilfred, I suppose I'll have to do away with him. Send him up to the highest turret, and I, in person, will push him off. Wilfred, I'm surprised at you, said the king. Well, that's not a bad idea. So the king and the Grand Duke led Bartholomew Cubbins toward the highest turret. Up and up the turret stairs he climbed behind them. This is my very last chance, thought Bartholomew. He snatched off his hat, 347. He snatched off another. He pulled and tore and flung them behind him. 398, 399. His arms ached from pulling off all those hats. But still the hats came, and Bartholomew climbed on. 448, 449, 450, counted Sir Alaric, puffing up the stairs behind him. Look. He's puffing up the stairs and counting at the same time. Suddenly, Sir Alaric stopped. He looked. He took off his triangular spectacles and wiped them on his sleeve. And then he looked again. The hats were beginning to change. Did you notice? The hats are beginning to change. 
451 had not one but two feathers, 452 had three, and 453 also had three and a little red jewel. A new hat, and each new hat was fancier than the hat before. Your Majesty! Your Majesty! cried out Sir Alaric, but the King and the Grand Duke were way up where they couldn't hear. They had already reached the top of the highest turret, and Bartholomew was following just behind. <clears throat> Step right out here and get up on the wall, snapped Grand Duke Wilford. I can't wait to push you off. But when Bartholomew stepped out the wall, they gasped in amazement. He was wearing the most beautiful hat that they had ever seen, that anyone had ever seen in the kingdom of Did. Look at that. It had a ruby larger than any the king himself had ever owned. It had ostrich plumes and cockatoo plumes and mockingbird plumes and paradise plumes. But such a hat, even the king's crown seemed like, like nothing in comparison. The Grand Duke Wilfred took a quick step toward Bartholomew, and Bartholomew thought his end had come at last. But wait, shouted the king. He couldn't take his eyes off that hat. I won't wait, the Grand Duke talked back to the king. I'm going to push him off right now, and that new big hat makes me madder than ever, and he flung out his arms to push Bartholomew off, but the king was quicker than Wilfred. Look at this. He grabbed Wilfred by the back of his lace collar. This is to teach you, his majesty said sternly, that grand dukes never talk back to the king, and he turned the grand duke Wilfred over his knee, and he spanked him soundly right on the seat of his royal silk pants. And now, smiled the king, lifting Bartholomew down from the wall, it would be nice if you would sell me that wonderful hat. 498, 499, broke in the tired voice of Sir Alaric, who had just arrived at the top of the steps. And that, he pointed to the hat on Bartholomew's head, makes exactly 500. Remember the name of the book? 500, exclaimed the king. Will you sell it for 500 pieces of gold? Ah, oh, anything you sire, answered Bartholomew. You see, I've never sold one before. The king's hands trembled with joy as he reached out for the hat. Slowly, slowly, Bartholomew felt the weight of the great hat lifted from his head. He held his breath, and suddenly he felt the cool evening breeze blowing through his hair. His face broke into a happy smile. The head of Bartholomew Cubbins was bare. Look! Look, your majesty, he shouted to the king. No, you look at me, answered the king. And he put that great big hat on right over his crown. Arm in arm, the king and Bartholomew went down to the counting room to count out the gold. Then the king sent Bartholomew home to his parents. No basket on his arm, no hat on his head, but 500 pieces of gold in a bag. There's the king walking with Bartholomew wearing a hat. And there's Bartholomew with his bag of gold. And the king commanded that the hat that he had bought and all the other hats be kept forever in a great crystal case by the side of his throne. Neither Bartholomew Cubbins nor King Derwood himself nor anyone else in the kingdom of dead could ever explain how such a strange thing had happened. They could only just say it happened to happen and probably would not likely ever happen again. And as far as I know, it never happened again. And that's the story of the 500 Hats of Bartholomew Cubbins by Dr. Seuss. I hope you liked the story, and I'll have another story for you before too long. See you soon. I love you. Goodbye.